So we have a couple more things I want to show. The first one is, you know, how to uh, delete columns and rows. So for this, we can use the drop um, function. And so depending if you want to delete columns, I think this we've already seen it before, right? I can use the F, I do use a drop method and pass the name of the column. And if I wanted to uh, delete a row, then I would pass uh, the argument index and keep the um, index of the row to uh, to delete. Drop also takes this uh, in place arguments that can be uh, true or false depending on if you want to return a copy of the data frame or modify the actual uh, uh, data frame. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, let's just quickly look at the example. So we have our original data frame here. Now let's say we want to delete the name column. So I will, here I will put it in a, in a variable, uh, but you can also pass it directly. But here I set column to delete equals name, and then I will call so drop method and pass it the so column to delete. And you see that uh, because I did not specify in place equals true, uh, I what I got is a copy of the data frame. So in my original data frame, I still have the name column, but not in the copy. And if I now had, um, if I put in place equals true, then I, you see that the value that is returned is now, is not a data frame, it's a object none, because when you put in place, then the function returns none. And what happens is that um, it modifies the original uh, data frame. So now the column name is no longer present. If I test if the column name is present in the original data frame, it's uh, deleted. And the last thing we want to see is how we can then, you know, once you finished doing your <clears throat> analysis, uh, maybe you, you know, you did some changes to your data frame, like you maybe updated some columns or you added some new columns that you want to keep. And so, you want obviously to uh, to make your work permanent. You want to save this uh, your work to a, a file. Okay, so basically you want to export your data frame to a file on disk. And here it's uh, again just like for reading, there are a number of different functions uh, that will export to different file formats. So you have, for instance, two CSV to write a file to a <clears throat> comma separated uh, text file. But if you wanted to export to Excel, you could also do this with to Excel or to an HTML document with two underscore HTML and so on. You can click here to see other uh, of these uh, other formats to which you can um, export. Okay, and then the, the way that you use this method is very simple. You simply take your the data frame you want to export, you call the two CSV method on it, and you pass as argument, you give the name or the pass of the file where you want to write. Okay, so if I export my uh, data frame to uh, CSV, here I will create a file called my data. If I go into my uh, notebook browser, I should see <clears throat> that I have now a file name, uh, my data. And if I open it, it will contain the, the data I export. Um, yeah. Again, you have a couple of uh, options. I mean, you have many options that you can pass to these functions. So maybe most useful being SEP, uh, just like when reading, when writing, you can also specify which uh, character should be used as separator in your 
output file. Uh, by default, it's a comma, but I could change this to something else. Um, and I can specify if the header should be, uh, for instance, included or not in the output, in the export of my file. 